and we're going to call the regular meeting of the Budget and Finance Committee to order. Uh, we have a uh, quorum, a full committee. Mr. Weizar, Mr. Smith, Mr. Rosendahl, Mr. Koretz, and myself, Bernard Parks, as the uh, chair. What we'd like to do is to, uh, colleagues, if we can take uh, the uh, closed session items first, and we go one through six, uh, so that we can, if there's any specific items on six that you'd like to discuss in closed session before we approve that report. And then uh, five is a report that we've been asking uh, for the uh, city attorney to come back and advise us. And so if we can do that, we'll be back. If anyone has any comments they'd like to make on items 7 through 10, please get us your cards in and we'll get started on those items as soon as we're back from the closed session. So thank you. And delete inactive funds. Okay. Let me just ask, uh, we have two cards on number, no, one card on number seven. Mr. McQuiston, come up now. Mr. McQuiston, while you're there, you can also do your public comment. We'll merge them. Pardon? While you're there, you can do your public comment also. Oh. Yeah. So we'll give you three minutes. You can do both. Okay. Thank you. This is item seven, though, Step first. Seven, but then we'll give you a minute for your public comment. Okay. Jim McQuiston, this is on item seven. Uh, I was looking at the list on item seven. I'm a big fan of getting rid of things that we don't need. However, <clears throat> I looked, and uh, there's a tremendous amount of the preferential parking districts that want to be uh, gotten rid of. And the problem is, of course, I have, uh, I'm in parking district number 80. 80 is a permanent district. There are some which are temporary for only six months. And perhaps some of the six months ones have already gone by the by, but not uh, number 80. And you know, the budget says that uh, <clears throat> if you have a, a uh, fund, you can't spend the money unless there's money in the fund. Uh, if it's a general fund item, you can spend the money whether or not you've been appropriated it. Now, the problem is that the parking districts deal with property, real property. And the Constitution says that the money can only be spent on the, that particular property. So it looks to me like the preferential parking districts ought to be separated out from there and actually gone through to see which ones are still in operation and which ones are not because the ones that are still in operation, if the signs go down or the signs get defaced, they can't be fixed unless the money is there in the special fund. And you can borrow the money from the special fund for something else, but if you do need the money, why, you, you really have to account for it because otherwise it would be unconstitutional. That's in uh, Article 13 D and C. So that is my opinion on that particular point. On the other point, the general comment, I wanted to say that uh, uh, I believe when Mayor Reardon uh, wanted to be the boss, he said he was going to take the heat for everything. And I noticed uh, that there doesn't seem to be enough pressure lately on our budget people, who I think are excellent, uh, but who lately, in the last two or three years, don't seem to be doing the job. And so many of the budget directors and so many of the CAOs have quit. Uh, it seems like there's a problem at the top. And I think since the uh, city council can't really do much about the budget because the charter says they're not supposed to except to approve it, uh, that they really have to clamp down on the, on the uh, uh, <coughs> mayor and get some action on that. It's time to light a fire 
it's not time to sit back and say, oh, gee, you've been doing a great job, but we got to do something better. It's not been a great job. It's got to be done better. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, we have the uh, city staff, the controller, the city clerk, city attorney. Yes. We have someone from the city clerk's office and also the city attorney's office. Is this a lack of interest or is this just a boring subject? <laughs> okay. Why don't you give us the process you went through to produce this report? Uh, Matthias Farfan for the office of the controller. Uh, pretty much uh, the controller's been working with departments on funds uh, they have control over it to identify those funds that have been inactive for the last few years. And through that process, the controller has been closing out the funds. Uh, that is, there are no longer uh, appropriations within these funds. Uh, there is no cash. There hasn't been any receipts needed to the fund. So they've been already administratively closed out. So this report is now coming before you to um, ask for the authority to now request that the city attorney prepare the ordinances to formally close out the funds. Okay. Let, it, let me ask you one thing. Is that what was, it, what was the criteria used by the controller, and if there were funds in the account, where did those funds go? Uh, well, it, it was working with the departments, and it all depends on where those funds came from. Uh, many of these are, are were created as a result of issuing debt, so they were just pretty much the fund, the cash had already been exhausted from the funds that had been spent, um, and that, that's a bulk of them. Uh, but it was really in working with the departments, and if you had specific questions regarding the funds, I would have to defer to the department that administers that. that specific Let me ask you also: Is it required uh, either by your process or the charter that these funds get audited over some period of time? Uh, right now, it, the only thing that's uh, in place is the financial policy governing the creation of new funds, in, in which. Um, the controller has recommended and, and council has agreed that on a go forward basis, as funds are created, that they should have a, a something in the fund that requires it to come before you from time to time to review it, some sort of sunset clause, so you would have the opportunity to review the fund to see if it's still needed. So that, that's the new one. If we were advised when we did this motion under this uh, uh, CF number that there was some form of an annual review or requirement that funds get audited periodically. Uh, well, and we I'm are. Sorry, do you do that or the city clerk or who does it? We are reviewing those and this report here is recommending that the funds on attachments one and two are the ones that city attorney mm -hmm. then now prepare the ordinances and come back to you to get adopted to formally delete the funds. Attachment three is part of that annual review which um, we intend as the year end closes this fiscal year, attachment three are those funds that have already been identified that are inactive. And so on some future date next fiscal year, there would be another report that would come before you that would include the funds listed on attachment three and perhaps additional funds on, on top of those. Okay. So but that there would be an annual review. Because what, what we were trying to do on this motion was saying if you're gonna be doing an annual review, that it would appear that's the appropriate time to close them out so we wouldn't end up with five and six pages of numbers mm -hmm. uh, but we could never get an understanding with the city attorney as to whether that would require a blanket ordinance that says when this occurs or did we have to do a ordinance every time you found a fund was no longer functional and 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 then the other criteria was dealing with what did you use the criteria was it de minimis numbers of dollars was it that it hadn't been active for a year or whatever? We could not ever get our arms around what was going to be the criteria. But what we didn't want, I think we were told at one time there was over a thousand funds mm -hmm. that the controller was monitoring. And, and so that's why we set the criteria to say in the future, there should be certain guidelines and the controller should, I think, uh, comment on it, but it was not required the controller approve it. Mm -hmm. It was the council's authority to approve it. And yep. so we, we gave it to the controller to say, is there any other fund that's similar and things of that nature? But w w this is the first effort to weed out some of the thousand that we were told were either not being used or were being used so infrequently that these funds uh, uh, were no longer viable. And it was just 
repetitive paperwork for the controller to audit them and say there's no money, no activity, mm -hmm. that we're going to move them up, uh, get rid of them. And so is the annual process the best process to use, or how do we do this on an ongoing basis so we don't have to play catch up? Uh, well, for right now, we have few options regarding the existing funds. Uh, we can only adhere to the financial policy that was put in place in 2006 mm -hmm. and on a go-forward basis as departments request to create new funds that they include some type of uh, sunset clause. As I mentioned before, uh, many of these are a result of issuing debt. Each time we, we go out to the market and issue debt and receive the, the cash, uh, there is a new fund that's created for that receipt of cash because we need to track the interest earnings um, on that cash, so just to make sure we're not earning more interest than what we're paying in debt service. And so it would be if just with that one process, if we just made sure that each time you see a report coming forward with, you know, to authorize the issuance of debt, that there is some sort of sunset clause placed in that ordinance that would eliminate a bulk of the new funds on a go forward basis. But as far as the ones that have been created to date, uh, we have no choice but, but to do it this way. Okay. But the things on the new ones, you'll have uh, well, you have the sunset. The other thing, when you're talking about creating these funds because of Mikla and all of that, do those additional uh, accounts come to the council each time for approval, or is that just an administrative function between the city clerk and the uh, control, the controller's office? Uh, it's my understanding they, they do come before council each time. Yeah, basically when we go out, to, every time we go out for issuance, there is a resolution and it does create actually a fund. Yeah, there's an ordinance that creates a fund. Okay. And that the ordinance fund, of, the, of the going out for the debt creates the fund? Yeah, we have to create okay. four or five funds per bond issue okay. because each, each bond issue requires a certain amount of funds that go with it in order to be able to track it and for the IRS. I mean, they're required. So that, that's the document that in the future will have a sunset clause? Well, they sunset when the bonds are done. Some of them you can sunset within a year, but some of them you have to keep in place for 30 years or 20 years as long as the bond is. Okay. Let me ask you. If you and those we close. In other words, when we're done paying a debt service, we go through a process of closing our funds. But, you know. And we close them out, but if the ordinance did not formally have that sunset date, in the ordinance, then the okay. controller, it, it will appear as a closed fund in our financial system, but right. we, the controller will carry forward those okay. funds year That's to year. That's what we're trying to get off the book. So Ellie, have you will, looked at all uh, uh, attachment one, two, and three? Are, are these funds, uh, are, I mean, most of them, uh, they're asking to close. Are those funds that already bonds have already been used and, and it's now closed or what? Yes. We will we will work with the city attorney's office to make sure that they have that when we're ready to close the fund that we can close the fund. We'll work with the controller and the city attorney to make sure we're closing these funds out. Okay. Yes, the action, if, if you approve it today, it, it's simply requesting that the city attorney work with city staff to prepare the ordinances that do require an ordinance to formally delete the fund. So at that time, once we go through the list again, if there is an ordinance that is required to delete the fund formally, that will be coming before you. So at that time, you'd be able to review it one last time to say okay. yes or no. So how many of these, how many funds do you actually eliminate with uh, one through one and two and three? Well, right now, it, in the attachment, there's a, a total at the end of each one. But on attachment one, there's 188 funds listed. On attachment two, there's 34 listed. And those are the two. Uh, we're uh, they're ready to go now. Yes, we're so recommending what, for. What does that leave you now monitoring? How many funds is that? I, I don't have that number with me, sir. And so the attachment three is 50 that are pending. Uh, 50 that are pending, yes. Okay. And then what what does uh, attachment four represent? Attachment four represents. Uh, these are usually the proprietary departments, DWP airports, and and their boards. Um, sometimes create funds. And it's simply, uh, we've been working with them as well to identify funds that are inactive. And those are presented also just for informational purposes as well. Okay. Any questions? Let me just ask, if we can ask the, uh, uh, as the, the controller's recommendations basically 
uh, is asking the city attorney to create the necessary ordinances uh, for uh, to get rid of these reports on attachment one and two, and then that we uh, are consistent with the uh, city's financial policy to, on a go-forward basis, ask the city attorney to incorporate a sunset clause in ordinances that establish new funds. Yes. Okay. And then uh, uh, do we need also in that ordinance to ask that, that those funds, if any, are in those accounts, go to the general fund? Um, I don't think so. We'll work with um, certainly on our debt fund about moving the, the money out as when things close, and we'll make sure we'll work with the controller and the departments as necessary. So, okay. so and if, if there is, I will say though, if there is any cleanup language that's necessary, then we'll make sure it gets vetted. The, the other one I'd like to see is that we have a routine process as the, as the motion requested that there be a, an ordinance that gives the controller that when that an ordinance gives them the ability to close it, that it's also off the books, that we don't have to do a two-step process, mm -hmm. that the ordinance should give them the authority that once they close it off, uh, even absent a sunset clause, that it's removed from not only administratively, but it's removed out of the, off the books. Well, what we'll do, we'll work with the city attorney to make sure whether or not we can do one ordinance that can address everything or whether we have to do several ordinances, but we'll. Okay, if we can give it to the city attorney. So those would be the directions, uh, those three directions that we just given, that we move this forward uh, and accept the recommendations of the uh, controller uh, with, uh, as uh, their two uh, recommendations and the third one that I've just directed. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Do we need a report back of when all that's going to be in place, Ray? Um, you know, we'll report back 30 days. Okay. Yeah. All right. 30-day report back on, on what system is going to be put in place. Next item. Okay. That takes us to item number eight. Eight it was continued from December 13th, 2010. Uh, it was a joint report actually from um, – Airports, uh, DWP, and Harbor uh, response to motion in all Parks relative to the feasibility of the city pooling its purchasing power for insurance premiums relative to all general funded and all proprietary departments. Mr. Rosal, I'll lead this. Okay, we have the city staff come up, the CAO and what the uh, proprietary departments. Basically, uh, talked about the study to include a pooling arrangement. The DWP could save two million. Lava could save one point seven. The port could save three hundred thousand. The city general fund department could save six hundred thousand annually for a combined total of four point six million. The, the, the theory is centralizing the city's purchasing power for insurance. <coughs> would require the city council and the mayor to address some critical issues and possibly change the city charter. If there is ever a remote possibility that the city general fund could benefit from this new source of revenue and greater efficiencies and options, then those options should be explored. So what we basically did, I put the motion in when our second it, uh, was, was to see where we could go. When we look at the report, and I'd like you to comment, I guess my basic report back or, or my direction is going to be, I'll tell you up front, is that we asked the general managers of DWP, Harbor, and airports, along with the CAO and the CLA, to meet in person in the next 10 days with staff of CD8 and CD11 to discuss this concept and respond to the motion with potential ways to make this happen. The way we read the report, it kind of just says, well, right hand, left hand, this and that, and it mumbles back and forth and basically doesn't take it to the direction we want this motion to take, which is can we pool our, our efforts in, in this kind of stuff and save some money? And uh, in the report, it references 2006, an ARM technical study needed to be updated. But, you know, this is now 2011. Five years, and so I'm just wondering um, why we're at this point where we really don't have any answers, and would it make sense for you all to get together with those departments? 
If I may, it uh, probably would make uh, sense for us to, to get together as a group uh, and one more time and, and see what, what <coughs> opportunities there are. As you mentioned, the report was done in 2006. Um, I know there were some, uh, and at, at that time it, it was done with everybody um, sort of being on the, on the same page or with some of the same goals. I think certainly as the proprietaries look at their operations, there's been some concern about some areas uh, that perhaps wouldn't fit uh, nicely with a, a pulling uh, type approach. Um, I, I know there was issues about whether we can look at some of the buildings, some other things. Um, we didn't want to, from, at least from the CEO's perspective, spend too much more time if we weren't going to be able to get a, a benefit um, from it. But uh, I think your, your request, your instruction for us to, to perhaps get together, just lock ourselves in a room, uh, have one last meeting, and see whether or not there are opportunities uh, to actually get anything. So. Yeah, I would like that and have the report. I'm a, I'm a optimistic spirit in life. I always see opportunities, and I, and I think there is an opportunity here that I'd like to see explored thoroughly rather than saying, no, we can't do it, can't do it. Because we're down to every nickel and dime number. And as we finish this fiscal year and the situation we're in, we have the next fiscal year to look at. I must say I'm sympathetic with the furloughs. I don't want them, and I don't want the layoffs or any of that stuff. I'd like to find other ways in which we can keep our city functioning at, at the level it needs to function. And this could be a helpful way of doing it. So we have to think out of the box we haven't thought out before. Just like any comments on that? Anybody? Mark Adams, Los Angeles World Airports. Um, Councilman Rosendahl, I, 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 I see great logic in what you say. Um, getting together, as Mr. Serrano um, has suggested, is a good idea. I think um, uh, the, 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 the information in the report is aged at this point and um, could, be, could use a fresh look. And I know that after we heard this last time, your office did try to convene a, a group that you know, the meeting got canceled a couple times <laughs> and we never got together. And so I think um, having another meeting would probably be a productive thing. Um, appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Bruce Brown, uh, Los Angeles World Airports, our risk manager. Yeah, we have, I have reached out to the uh, CEO's office for reports on uh, their property inventory. So there are ongoing discussions with that office. And there may potentially be some ways. Uh, as the insurance market evolves, so we may look to uh, see some economies of scale by combining. Because uh, yeah, obviously, economies of scale is what we're looking for. Correct. Uh, correct. You know, uh, the proprietary departments, no matter how much we're suffering in our general treasury, continue to, to have their revenue streams and, and, and their realities is different than the rest of the city. And wherever we can tie things together and save money, that's where we're at, sir. I'm Bob Henry with the uh, LA Harbor Department, and we agree we can also meet. Uh, in fact, Kurt, Kathy Murkowski, our risk manager, has been talking to the CAO over the past few months. And Molly Campbell, our chief uh, financial officer, and Kathy are very willing to meet at any time, so we're ready to go. Good, sir. Yes, sir. Paul Rella, CAO. I just uh, echo what Rhea said. Um, I think it's a good idea to see if we can, at this time, come up with some savings. Okay, we have to come up with some savings, okay? All right, that's where I'm at. Yeah, thank you. Uh, as I've read the reports last time, there's obvious um, different opinions about what could be done. There's a 2006 report and the proprietary, proprietary order report that disagree with that report. So I'm very interested in seeing what, what follows. But um, the, the 2006 report is very old. Not very old, but given economic situations, things tend to change with the economy being what it is, insurance premiums, all the financial stuff that goes on with that. It's a very different economic time than it was in 2006, so that report may or may not still be accurate. Um, so I'm very interested to see how th we, we shouldn't rely on that report as much as what I'm saying, because things have right. changed substantially. How much time do we need to really get to the bottom of this? A week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks? Give us uh, about you know three, four weeks to, to get together, have a good meeting, find out whether there's uh, opportunities and areas that we can really look at, take another approach, and we can report back. Okay, I'm happy for that, Mr. Park, but maybe it's more than one meeting, maybe a series of meetings, a series of discussion. I'm willing to go up as far as four weeks if the chair feels that if, in fact, find the gold in the gutter, let's find some savings. Let's find some <laughs> Let's find some ways in which we can do this. But let me just comment. I think one of the things we asked last time, and we understand that there's some unique issues in the harbor that doesn't match the airport and, and certainly doesn't match the DWP. But at least there was one that seemed like everybody left with understanding maybe property 
was a unique situation that we could all put our arms around, but we didn't get a response on that. So we really need to see if there's like kinds of issues. We're not trying to fo force uh, issues such if you have no involvement in a certain area, you, you have to create one. We're not asking you to do that. But if you can sit down and figure out if we're all, uh, you know, uh, putting insurance on item A and we're all doing it, can we do it collectively and find a better uh, economy of scale? If only one department has item A, then we understand that you're going to be dealing with it. We're not trying to pull, pull your risk management assets into one place and say, you know, the departments need to rely on a centralized location. So nobody's trying to do that. But we do believe that if you sit down and find out what are the kinds of things that you deal with on an ongoing basis that are like issues, can there be some savings to the city? And again, if you strike them out and say, I'm the only one at the harbor that have boats, everybody understands that. But the issue is, if you all have something else in common, then we'd expect you to say, you know, why is this not reasonable to consider? Okay. okay. So if we can go four weeks on that, Ray, and get a report back. Uh, and we, like I said, uh, uh, I know everybody's shorthanded, everybody's tied up, but this is a significant issue that you put enough time and effort so we get a, a, a reasonable report back. We would not like to bring this to committee again and continue it again. Okay. So thank you. <laughs> the, uh, next item, nine. Item nine, yes. And why the, uh, the city staff is coming up, we have Jennifer uh, Rivera. Which one? Open. Hi there. Hi. Good afternoon. Jennifer Rivera for Councilmember Dennis Vine. Uh, first, I'd like to thank you, Councilmember Parks, for scheduling this item so quickly. Uh, while we understand that a 10% reduction in cell phone usage is hardly enough chunk of change to solve our problems, Councilmember Zine does believe that it sends a strong message okay. to the public. Government can't be run the same way anymore, and any expenses needed need to be limited to core city services. Council Member Zai knows that there are two audits currently underway in the controller's office, which will bring forth relevant information in regards to our cell phone contracts, which will tell us if we're receiving the best competitive rates out there. Secondly, Council Member is aware that ITGA, under the chairmanship of Council Member Cardness, is also looking at procurement policy for cell phone service agreements, including methods to achieve optimal savings on existing and future contracts. Council Member Zine wants to be clear that this motion does not address procurement. While we want to see the best competitive rates in all of our contracts, this motion wants to see an immediate reduction of all cell phone usage, no matter the price. Council Member Zine applauds the leadership of both Controller Wendy Gruel and Council Member Tony Cardness for helping renegotiate contracts, but we can't wait till that is completely done to start to see savings. There is no time. Council Member Zine requests approval of this motion by this committee so we can move with a rapid 10% reduction while we continue to analyze all contracts for the best rates, as well as for any penalties that may exist from further reductions. There is no reason these actions cannot be done concurrently. Let me just ask one thing so I clearly understand. Is his issue primarily dealing with the contracts and the service and what we're paying for them? Is he concerned with the issue of the dollars being spent to pay the bill? Just, just what part of it is he? Is it the contracts when we originally get phones, or is it the ongoing bill that he's worried about? The, uh, he's concerned with the actual cell phone. The so, cell phone bill. What, so what we're paying in cell phone usage is what the the, the issue. Right. Okay. Now. As far as uh, the recommendations on the re uh, for the motion from the CLA is to we make some assessment by re a report back as to where these phones might come from before we just whack them 10 percent. Is, is he consistent with that? I think he would like to see an immediate 10 percent reduction. I don't think he, he feels that a 10 percent is so minimal that we could do it now while we continue the analysis for a full 30 percent for next Any semester. idea where that 10 percent may come from? I mean, is it just? I, it should be each, de he would like to see a 10 percent reduction from uh, each department. From each department. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. That's more clear. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and I'll leave mine at the desk. I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. Can we have city staff come up? Thank you. Thank you. CLA, CAO. Uh, 
Yeah, anybody from general services dealing with the phones? Yeah, no, it'd be nice to have someone from ITA, but <coughs> they're not here. Pardon? It'd be nice to have someone from ITA, I, but. That would be key. Yeah. Okay. Good afternoon, Karen. So we have Kim. Yeah. How are you? <laughs> All right. What is your, the recommendation of CLA is that we uh, look at some reporting before we make a cut? Is that there? There are actually two two things that you can look at with regard to cell phones. There's there's the the number of cell phones, and there could be a possibility of reducing the number of cell phones um, if if some people have them that don't necessarily need them. And then there's the to take a look at at the contracts themselves. And whether those can be reduced, or if new, you know, plans can be reviewed to see if there's a, some savings that can be um, realized through the the plans. But yes, I think you might, might want to report back. And I mean, this can move forward to council, and with that request, and the CAO in our office, ITA, we could uh, take a look. What at kind that. of timing would you consider um, as far as a report back? You know, I know we can probably uh, get with the with ITA as far as reviewing the contracts because um, I, b I believe actually last fall we uh, they just renegotiated the contract with Verizon, but I think we can go back and and talk to them about the others, AT and T, and the other contracts we have. Um, it also, um, I think, as far as since the controller is actually doing collecting some information, if we can work with the controller's office to find out what, exactly what they've information they've gathered and that might make our jobs a little bit easier as well. Do you have any idea how many cell phones the city actually are responsible for? I don't know that offhand. I think ITA would have that information. And then the other the two things I thought about is that and every time we do something we have to be careful and I, they're not ever supposed to be but are there any employee relations issues in the fact that people are doing their job and they've been get, issued a phone and the phone is uh, taken away or something. Is that? That could be something that could be incorporated in a report back if there are any um, issues no, there. I understand the cost, but uh, supposedly they're part of the work function. So that's the kind of thing I think we have to look into. The other thing I would think we'd be asking, are there employees willing to either pay all or a portion of their bill as opposed to giving up their phone? Because, you know, one of the things, there's some of us that will pay your own bill so you don't have to pick out the phone calls that are personal and, and business because it takes more time to figure that out, so you just say, let me pay my bill and, and leave that alone. Right. But and the, the, the only portion of the, the uh, phone bills that the city should be paying are work-related. I know, but so. uh, that, that's a, uh, kind of catch-as-catch-can, depending on how thorough people look at the bill and figure out what's a business call and a personal call. Mm -hmm. uh, some of us do not have that attention span. So <laughs> it's one of those things of saying, give me my bill and let me pay it because I'm not going to go through it uh, again and again. My life. Yeah. So right. the thing is, I, those are the kind of things I would think, you know, because I would be concerned if we just whack 10 percent and not know where the 10 percent is coming from. And then if there's employee relations issues that we should be concerned about. And if there's options to where we know it's a benefit that someone's using the phone and they're out in the field somewhere, and that's what we ask. A lot of them we give in to people to stay in the field and not come to the office. So if they can do their work in that regard, or, you know, those are the things I think we have to know before we start cutting back. Right. And that's exactly right. A lot of people have cell phones so that they don't have to come into an office. They can they can be out in the field and be working. So there's there's some advantages in, in having that kind of connection too. But that all those kinds of things can be addressed in a report. Um, the motion asked to report back in 30 days. I suppose we could start there, and then if if it if there's a need for more time, we can. Because I don't think anybody will raise their hand and say they have an unnecessary, unnecessary uh, cell phone. So the first thing then would have to go. You may have a few. Have to, okay. <laughs> yes. Can we make a comment too on this while we're doing it? See this? Is this considered a cell phone? A Blackberry? Yes. I would yeah. imagine. Yeah, we forget that. Smartphone, mm -hmm. yeah. What do you consider this? It's also a cell a phone. A little cell phone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I get all my calls on this, and this is my private. I pay for all the calls. I don't even submit an expense bill to the city for anything. Okay? Uh, so that's mine, and I eat it, period, for whoever's calling. Because I'm not going to separate one person from another. It's my private phone. I can eat that. But this isn't a cell phone thing. This is part of the connection with my constituents, with my staff, and with performing my duties. I don't want no political gamesmanship to take away the connection that we have. This is not a luxury for me, unfortunately. This is a necessity. 
this is a combination of a necessity because every constituent has my cell phone number. The rich and the poor and everybody in between, staff and everybody else. But I pay that bill. And I'm proud of being able to say that I pay my bill. But I don't want to play political gimmickry on something that might be clearly part of the mission. I can tell you my constituents are the most engaged in the city. They register and they vote and they participate in absolutely everything that goes on. And without this, I can't function. And without this, I can't, but I'm not going to tie it up. So I don't want to waste a lot of city time and money trying to pretend we're, we're pulling a Gary Brown in the city over cell phones. Uh, Cynthia Varela with the Controller's Office. I just wanted to um, uh, mention the the um, ongoing audit that was mentioned in the uh, Council Member Zion's motion and was also uh, mentioned by CAO or CLA. Um, the, the focus of our audit, we're really looking at cell phone usage and some of the things that we're touching upon in that audit that's, that's ongoing right now is really looking at, for a select number of departments, um, whether uh, there's a business need for the employees on their cell phones. And Council Member Rosendale, we do consider smartphones, we're making some distinction as identifying as those as smartphones, the ones that have email capability versus the normal one that's just used or maybe the older one version that's used just for phone, uh, phone calls. Um, we're also looking at departments' um, uh, oversight and how they're monitoring cell phone usage for making sure that there's appropriate business needs and um, looking at how the departments are monitoring the cell phone contracts and the phone plans to make sure that they're getting maximum value. Um, those are the types of things that we're looking at with this ongoing review uh, that we hope to uh, issue a report within uh, probably sometime in April. As part of that audit, I also wanted to say that we, um, I think uh, CAO mentioned, we're giving us, we asked a survey of all the departments um, and elected official offices as well as the proprietary departments to give us, uh, to self-report on their number of cell phones, uh, smartphones and AR cards, the data cards that they use with the uh, computers and uh, we're compiling those results. That r request went out late in January and we're compiling those results now. That'll be a part of our report too. So. Uh, okay. no, for the record, I also have <laughs> city in front of me. Yeah. not that small. Yeah. Let, me, let me just say, ah. let, if we could give some clarity to the mo motion that, uh, colleagues, if we can support the CLA's uh, recommendations uh, amend the, the um, motion and ask the CEO to report uh, prior uh, to implementing any cuts uh, in cell phone issuance to ensure that the penalties, if any, uh, and any charges for early termination service will not exceed the projected savings. Uh, that we also ask the CAO and ITA to report back on whether savings can be realized through renegotiation of cell phone contracts or plans. Uh, that we also ask that we get a overview of the number of phones and the amount of usage in dollars that we are uh, uh, addressing in the city and we can get that over a several year period. We would also ask that prior to reducing or eliminating the phones that we uh, explore whether shared cost uh, be an option with employees uh, as opposed to the loss of the phone and then also uh, uh, we also asked the CAO to look at any employee relations issues as it relates to uh, the uses of phones as it relates to a part of the job assignment. And then uh, uh, we also asked that we include information from the controller's audit, if possible, to help us uh, come to a conclusion on this motion. And finally, is there any impact on our city's utility tax uh, if uh, we have a sudden significant drop in uses of phones? So, with that, uh, those seven directions, we can uh, move that. Next item. Okay, so that takes us to the last item, which is on our special um, meeting agenda. And this is the CAO report relative to revenue revisions for fiscal year 2010-11. We have we have three cards: Cheryl Parisi, Jim McQuiston, and Julie Butcher. Oh, okay. 
um, when you look, those indicators seem to be steady or slightly moving up. What is actually um, troublesome about this report is that the revenue indicators that are down are down because of the city's own making. Um, and specifically, I'm going to talk a little bit about P3. Um, clearly, this is, a, these are, this is a difficult decision, but these are times for difficult decision making. The P3 must be restored um, to a project that is viable, um, in which we will secure good bids in the market. Um, and we know they're hard decisions, but these are really the times to make decisions for all of Los Angeles. Um, the future of the, of the city, we cannot, we cannot sustain more service cuts, whether that be through layoffs or furloughs. Our communities simply can no longer um, tolerate um, the incredible diminution in service. And so, I, and so P3 is really um, must be strengthened and must be moved forward. But let me then talk specifically, and Julie's going to talk about one other item, um, something that is incredibly alarming to us. There is a um, noted decrease of $20 million in departmental receipts, uh, resulting uh, largely from lower ambulance collections in the first seven months of this year. As you all, I know, recall, this service was let to a private contractor. The work was outsourced and contracted out. And now seven months in, we're $10 million down. I implore you um, to investigate, to get to the bottom of this. We talked in this committee, we talked before council about the need to have guarantees and assurances from this contractor so this kind of thing would not happen. And now here we are. $10 million down from a contractor um, that assured you that collections would move up. Thank you. Thank you. Well, a contractor that you paid $800,000 to expedite the um, implementation of the devices, of which only 60 have been installed in fire trucks. <clears throat> on cell phones, yes, there are clearly labor relations implications, but the fact is on cell phones that every single department has at least one person whose job it is to get people to give them their bills so that they can charge them for the city calls. We represent managers that use cell phones um, in this city, and for several years we have been proposing that instead of doing that, that people use their personal phones and be reimbursed. There is a very simple fix. This is not the time to give up on this city. It is February. You are halfway through a year. Uh, now is not the time to throw in the towel, not on P3, not on getting revenues. The revenue numbers are actually the income is not your problem. The problem is collectively that nobody's in charge. There is limited management accountability. The other shortfall that we're starting to see, um, as projected, uh, is decreases in the number of uh, parking tickets. Well, that's pretty simple. Traffic officers um, retired. Traffic officers um, left city service and have not been replaced. For every hundred traffic officers, they cost you two and a quarter million dollars. They generate five and a half million dollars in revenue. You could do that again tomorrow. Um, the city needs to act like it's a crisis. You are asking workers um, to step up, and workers have in fact stepped up and will step up continuously because this is a city that we love. Um, but you need to act like it's a crisis. There needs to be top to bottom accountability um, and a movement towards acting like it's a crisis and that we have a plan to solve this crisis together. And then we'll be there. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have the CAO uh, and the CLA. Good afternoon, race runner with the CEO's office. Uh, to my right is Ben. To the right of him, we have Karen and, and CLA. Um, we in committee a couple weeks back when we were in the uh, off-site meeting out in the valley, we, we gave you a heads up, we gave a presentation, a little bit of a heads up that revenue was going to be short, uh, falling short a little bit this year. We also then made some comments last week in council um, in indicating the, the same information. We, we wanted to, to basically get that information to you out uh, in, in a written format uh, and give you sort of an overall picture as far as where we stand today. In, in the update that we provide you, there's, there's basically two components. There's the component where we talk about uh, our various revenue categories, you know, everything from property tax to our utility users tax uh, to license permit fees and fines, et cetera, et cetera. 
to also provide a little bit of an update on the P3 transaction. Uh, as you may recall, uh, we were instructed to, uh, to do uh, a little bit of outreach, so to speak, um, on the, the draft concession. Um, and unfortunately, with the concession as, as drafted, uh, we, we were uh, unable to get any uh, responsive bidders. Um, coming back to you with that update uh, and where we are revenue, uh, it puts us in a situation where we are trying to find ways to, to close the current year shortfall. You previously, I was just backing up a little bit. Just interrupt you. When you when you said there weren't any bidders, um, were parts of what we approved taken out of this, or what? I thought we had a, a package that uh, we felt uh, had the appropriate elements to it. I sat in one session that that was clear. Go ahead, Natalie. Uh, Natalie Brill, CAO. The package that you sent forward had a number of restrictions on it that we did talk about in council in closed session. And voted on it? Yes, you did. And how many people were there for that vote? I do not know, but we received... And when it came out of the council and was publicly voted, was it clear as to what was the elements in it and what the elements weren't in it? I We thought so. We yes, we did. And the elements that were in it included quite a bit of restrictions. Could you remember what those restrictions were that came I out? I don't of think that I can talk about that report? in public. We are actually, I believe, we're scheduled for Wednesday uh, session in council to provide a full update. Great. On, That's, that'll be on Wednesday. Thank you. But let me. I think one point to be clarified: what was voted on was what was submitted and what they responded to. There was no alterations to any plan after the vote. No, it was what council called us to do. Okay. Correct. <laughs> So um, when we came forward with our alternative plan, we were uh, estimating approximately $63 million shortfall. Um, we were taking into account the, the P3 plus some additional shortfalls in PD for the uniform. Uh, so we had $63 million shortfall. We've come to, to council and, and you've approved roughly about $30 million of that, leaving you know, 20 or $29 million left. Um, we now have, um, setting aside the P3, we do have additional shortfall in the revenue and other categories of roughly about $25 million. Uh, it brings us to roughly about 54. Uh, of the 25, um, it, there are some, some pluses and, and there are some, some minuses. Um, and this gives a sense of where we are today. Uh, we, we do, uh, I do want to tell you that we do believe things are going to change. Um, one of the things that was mentioned is license permit fees and fines. Uh, of the $20 million, roughly about $8 million of it is for ambulance billing. Um, Ray, why don't you do us a favor? Why don't you just use attachment, your attachment, and go down each one so we're, we have some idea on property tax how, as you've listed them so we're aware of what's up, what's down, and there could be questions about an individual uh, revenue source. Sure. So let's start off with property tax. Uh, right now, we are showing we're up about $4 million. Most of this has to do with the carryover from the prior year. Um, we will see as we go forward um, in April and May whether or not the county will actually um, short us a little bit and, and then move some of that money in the following year like they, they did last year. But at this point, we are ahead of plan, roughly about four plus million dollars. We did have some good news with the VLF um, swap and sales tax replacement, which certainly is helping us out. Now, one of the areas that we're concerned with is our utility users tax, uh, and this specifically is our electric users portion of that. Right now, we're projecting to be short about ten, ten, um, sorry, ten million dollars. Our budget was three fifteen. <laughs> And right now, we're only on track to get about 305. Um, we were, uh, as you may recall, we were hoping to get some rate cases coming through. And also, we were hoping that consumption would be relatively flat. Unfortunately, uh, that is where we're, we're seeing some uh, trends downward, is our consumption uh, is actually trending down in the 3, uh, the three to 4% range. One may say that's good. That's certainly, if we try to become a more green city, but it does hurt us when it comes to some of our revenues. Gas, uh, user tax, we are up right now, uh, most because of the commodity prices. Um, but our communication user tax, this is our telephone, uh, we are continuing a slow downward trend uh, in that revenue category. 
um, and we're expecting to be short of roughly about five million dollars. So as, as certainly our land lines are decreasing, unfortunately we're not, that loss is not being made up in the cell phone. Any questions so far in those, those categories? We're good. Uh, license permit fees and fines. Uh, right now we're reporting a roughly $20 million shortfall. There's two, um, there's a couple main categories in this. Um, one is the reduced cap rate reimbursement. This is affecting sanitation, uh, housing, um, uh, building safety is one of the others. This is where we're seeing those receipts being down slightly because of the reduced cap rate. Um, Can you being explain applied. that for us in the reduced cap rate? This is the cost allocation plan. These are the rates that are applied to special funds in order for the city to be reimbursed for all of the costs when it comes to pensions, health care, et cetera, et cetera. And, and that cap rate is set by the controller's report? It is, uh, the data is accumulated by the controller's office and it's, and the information is um, sent from the departments. Also in that category are the uh, ambulance billings are part of that. As I mentioned right now, they are short about $8 million. Uh, I know we, um, as we were in this transition period in the first six, seven months of the year, uh, we have seen some drop off in those revenues. Um, but I believe that the fire department is saying that as we go through the remainder of the year, they're going to be some pickup in those revenues, and I believe they're going to, by the end of the year, only be short uh, a couple million dollars. How much? Uh, Two million dollars was okay. the number I was given today. So they're saying that as they go through the transition, it will accelerate, so there will be two million down by June 30th. That's correct. Okay. okay. That's ambulance billing? Ambulance billing, yes. Well, I th I'm confused. I thought it was 20 million that were. The, the 20 million is the whole category of license uh, permit fees and fines. Okay. So of the $28 million right now is for ambulance billing. Okay. And that's, so that's the new system we got into. And, and we had pro projected how much we could realize under the new system? What's the revenue estimate? I it is. I, you don't remember? The, the revenue estimate for this year was $140 million. I don't have the exact number. And so what's hand. happening there? Just the vendors not performing or, or what's, what's it doing? No, I'm sorry. The, the total revenue from fire is roughly $140 million. I believe that category was $67 million for this year. Okay. And so what's happening with the <coughs> less revenue there than we projected? Is it the vendors just not performing? Or is it our, on our side we're not giving them this? What's going on? I, I think what's happening is basically the, the department, as they've implemented, implemented this system, there's a sort of this transition period right now. And so as they get the new system in, there was some backlog, some things that get cleaned up. And as I understand it, basically there, we had a little slow period the first six months of the year, and now things have been cleaned up, things have been rolled out, and by the end of the year, they should only be short uh, a couple million dollars. What's that? I think there's some question on Medicare reimbursement rates. Um, I'm not, they don't have the information. I think FIRE would be able to better speak to that, that issue. Can this, can this be more further explained, this $20 million when this gets to count? Are we sending this report to council or is this yes. just, yeah? yeah. I, I mean, that, that deserves, that's a big chunk of money. That, that really deserves a more explanation as to where that $20 million, uh, you know, gap that we have that, because we didn't realize so we could have a report on that when get, this gets to council. We can provide some more detail. Okay. There's a number of items in the, in the category. Thank you. Let me ask one other thing. On the ambulance building, is that driven if we have less ambulance response? It, it would be driven by the less response as well, yes. Okay, so if we're, if we're not going, do we know if, if we've had a drop of I, response? Or I don't do know, we know we've had a drop in response. Yeah. Mary Ann Rivera from Fire Department. Yeah. I, I don't think it's so much a... a a reduction in response. We're just having an issue because um, the contracts that we that that are in place are taking a little bit longer to get uh, completely and 100% functioning. In addition, we're having a Medicare issue in that Medicare and and the contractor that we have ADPI uh, right now are working out some issues so that we can bill them, and that equals to at least. Uh, 1.3 million dollars per month that is delayed, and we anticipate that that will be fixed and completed by the end of March. Now, is that a, a computer glitch, or is that just a dispute over criteria, or what? 
there the computer people are speaking to each other so that we can get the exact information across and once that's straightened out then we should be seeing that money coming in so there's funds that are owed to us that we just not retrieving because of the computer yes okay all right so can I ask a follow-up question I'm trying to remember the exact agreement with the contractor but were they not supposed to make up some of the shortfall if if they wound up collecting less than we were currently collecting or was there the payout to them substantially reduced I forgot what the deal was but will we not be able to make up some of that shortfall in in our deal with the contractor you know I do not know the answer to that question I don't have the specifics on that but we don't we assume that they are going to be making up all of the the revenue that they had anticipated bringing in this year the only thing is that the contract got in late as well as these these glitches that are here based on our revenue projections we're about four million dollars short and most of that money will be coming in from the Medicare that we're owed but it still have we haven't seen yet I want to make sure whatever savings we can get from that we're including in the calculations and we're not letting them skate off and off the hook. Do you have something to add? Do you have something to add? Yes. Yes, sir. Salvador Martinez from the Fire Department. I'm sorry. Was there a question? No, I said you have something to add. I saw Oh, no, I was just listening in there. I Okay. Yeah, and, and but we do anticipate uh, by year's end, though, uh, making up that and being uh, meeting our revenue projections that were uh, listed previously about 140 uh, million. Okay, so your your view is that the money's coming in slower, but you will meet your revenue projection. Correct, and uh, just on the start dates that we had. Uh, started with this fiscal year but we will be making it up the latter part of the year now do you have any remembrance as to whether there was any issue of uh, the company uh, uh, basically paying if they didn't meet their goals yes there was a penalty clause in there okay. sir but they are meeting that we anticipate they would meet it so they would not uh, have a penalty uh, being applied to them okay so the, so the issue is if they meet it by June 30th there is no penalty correct okay. they meet the revenue goals All right. so are, are we are we in our calculations for uh, uh, meeting the end of the year? Are we anticipating they're meeting all those revenues, or are we calculating losses based on where we are in January? What we have here if in our report is where we are today, uh, as far as um, the, the the drop in revenue. Uh, I think, as the department has indicated, that they expect uh, to be on track with ambulance billing through the, by the end of the year. In which case, it would change the 20 million, and certainly would bring that down. I think when we when we come to council, I believe, which is Wednesday, we'll make sure we have you know have all the answers to your question as far as the contract um, was regarding the vendor and then any other information to, to provide an update. Because it sounds like we're we're anticipating a loss and trying to cut for it, but at the same time we're anticipating not charging the vendor because we expect to bring in the money we calculated. So obviously we need to be consistent one way or the other. I would agree. Okay, have we covered all of the uh, the, the chart? Um, so just a couple more just to bring your attention. So we're also down in parking fines uh, by between 8 and $9 million uh, with issuance being below um, levels. Uh, also, the documentary transfer tax is, is down roughly is about. Is our five. view on the uh, traffic site? Is that furlough generated, or is that? Do we have any sense that uh, it's the volume is per officer still at the same rate, or is it? I believe that productivity has dropped. Um, folks are not furloughed, so um, this, this group this group was exempt from the furloughs. Okay. So they are not furloughed. So they were ex the, the traffic officers that are riding site are exempt. That's correct. Now, do we have any sense from DOT as to why the reduction in citation? As I understand it, they are looking into the, the issue as to, to uh, trying to get a better understanding as, as why issuance has been falling. 
Okay. So if we can have that, com if they can be there on Wednesday to comment on what their research has determined. Uh, if, if I could add one thing to that, uh, I know at, at times we've, well, I certainly brought the issue up a few times that we, we uh, had a department that was understaffed, even though um, it's clear that they bring in more revenue than, than, uh, than their salaries uh, for whatever reason for a certain period of time, and I, it may still be the case we were determined to, to understaff the number of people writing tickets. So if we could uh, get a report back on whether that has been corrected and how much of this shortfall that could have caused, um, that would be helpful. And I'll take that a step further. As chair of transportation, I never wanted a single employee uh, laid off that was a revenue generating employee. I don't know how many times I, I said it to staff that anybody that's generating revenue, for God's sake, uh, uh, they shouldn't be furloughed or, or laid off. I don't know how many times I have to say it, but I've said it a million times. And if, in fact, we're down in revenue because the people that should be doing it, is, as the union said, two and a half million versus the four and a half million they bring in or whatever those numbers were. I'd love to know what, what, what really happened with that. Also, in code enforcement, building and safety. I have been bringing this up for a long time. There are a lot of violations of codes out there. And uh, the revenue generating ability of building and safety uh, needs to obviously, again, address that issue of code enforcement and the revenues that can be brought in on that. And I think we're still waiting for uh, uh, information to come back on, on creating a, a more simplified code enforcement program that could be very cost effective. So. Hopefully that can uh, uh, be advanced uh, sometime in the very near future. Ray, could, could we have uh, just so that there's clarity on Wednesday to identify those revenue producers like tra uh, traffic officers and such uh, and identify uh, specifically if they're under furlough or not and also specifically identify if they're, uh, if they're va what their vacancy rate is so that we're we can get to the information. I can tell you, t you know, today that they are not being furloughed and, and no one in the traffic okay. officer class has been laid off. Okay. But we need to know whether they're all the positions are filled. That's correct. I, I think it's, it's from our, what I understand, it's, it's maybe more of a productivity issue right now. Okay. So we need to know that uh, on that and, and building and safety and other places that are creating revenue so that we uh, are aware of it so we'll have the correct information during the discussion. And also the ambulance business about not collecting, going to an outside contractor, uh, what was mentioned by one of the union leaders. Uh, is there any truth to that, or can you give us a report back on that point that was made here in front of us? Anybody have an answer to that? Well, I think uh, the uh, Ben Sahel to um, CAO, I think the department uh, just reported that they intend to make up most of that revenue um, by the end of this fiscal year that most of that, the decrease in that revenue was being caused by some implementation issues that should be taken care of uh, towards the end of the fiscal year. I just want clarity, that's all, because when somebody and makes a comment like that. Also remember, too, it's not going to be lost revenue, because if there was a transport that took place, the billing will occur. It may not have occurred this moment, but once um, a transport has occurred, it may be billed Today, it could be billed next month. It's incurred. So if there is a, a glitch right now, it will be recovered at some point because we will eventually issue that bill, and then the recovery will occur shortly after that. Part of the problem with um, ambulance billing has been um, with regard to primarily the reimbursement rate that we get because, as you know, um, as we recover, the, we cannot recover the full cost of that ambulance transport, and frequently it's – uh, insurance that reimburses. So if an individual is transported um, and Medicare pays for it, we can't go back to that individual and recover the difference in the cost. So there's a lot of moving pieces as it relates to ambulance billing. So we just need to look at that a little bit more carefully. Um, we want to go back and look at the penalty clause that was associated with the contract that you approved. Um, we also need to look at the transport rates, too, because it could be that um, we're not transporting as many patients to the hospitals as well. Uh, when fire department reports on scene, there's only a bill generated if an, an individual is actually transported to the hospital. Um, you know, last year, I believe there was roughly 100,000 transports that took place. If there's any decrease in that, then yes, the numbers are going to come down. Same thing with parking tickets. Um, if maybe perhaps with regard to the improved um, parking meters, 
there isn't as many violations that are occurring. There are a number of factors that go into the revenue that we just need to delve into further. Okay. I appreciate that. And when you report back, it's just that when our very seriously committed union leadership makes a comment, and I want to make sure it's either true or not true and have the facts, that's all. So that's why I want the report back. Next item, Ray. Okay. So moving on down the chart, I guess two bright spots is our transit occupancy taxes at our hotel tax. Certainly we've seen some improvement with business travel, and we're up upwards of $7 million. So this is definitely some good news for us and for the city. Our business tax budget was set at roughly about $412 million. Finance has come back and said we're looking at probably revenue at a range of $420 million, which is an improvement of over $8 million. So certainly these two are very positive revenue categories. As we go forward, we'll get more information. I think we won't, in late March, we will get some results from the holiday or the fourth quarter sales. Hopefully we'll see some good news there that will further help our overall shortfall. But this is sort of the information that we have through January. Let me just ask, the one of concern is on the real property transfer on corporate. Did we just not resolve that legal issue between the city and the county, or is the money just not forthcoming? As I understand it, the amount of money that we received thus far is through transactions. There may be some other issues as far as going back in time that may not have been resolved, but this is, I think, some transfers that have occurred this year. It's just a lower transfer. It's just a lower transfer. It's not because I understood when we first got into it, there was some conflict of whether the city and the county agreed on the process and the legality. Councilman, the county is collecting it. I think there, if I recall correctly, there was a certain period of time after it was incurred that it could be collected. So it's possible now that the receipts are just down. Okay. Okay. Are there any questions on the chart before we go to another part of the report? The only thing I want to ask you about the transit occupancy tax, which I'm glad it's gone up. Do we have a picture of what transit occupancy taxes were not collecting that either were deferred or part of a business deal or part of a CRA area and never came back? Do we have a sense what there might be out there that we might look at and see if we can get an effort to bring in some more revenue? For instance, we know the downtown big hotel that was deferred for 25 years. I've heard figures like $300 million. And I want to know if there are others that we have cut in CRA areas, which I don't get to see. I don't have a CRA in my district. If there's anything that could go back on the tax rolls where we finish various projects or other places where we should put them back on the tax rolls. If we can just get a sense of what might be out there as well. Sure. We can do that research for you. Yeah. Thank you. So let's see your total change is $87 million. How much have we redirected or cut already? So how much is left to redirect or cut for this fiscal year? Roughly, you've made decisions on approximately $30 million. $33 million. How much? $33. So we have a remaining gap of $54. We have a remaining gap of $54. Yeah. Okay. But it's possibly going to change as we look at the $20 million again, right, to kind of look into that deeper. And the asset restructuring, we're being told it can happen this year. Fines are foreclosed properties. And I think if I may just general, you know, we're in the midst of preparing our mid-year report. And so we're going through all the department's information, trying to scrub the accounts, find out whether they have savings, et cetera, et cetera. So as we come forward in the next couple of weeks in March with the mid-year, hopefully we'll have some better news both in specific revenue categories, but also hopefully some of the expenditure shortfalls in some of the departments will come down. So this is what we have today, though. Let me ask you, Ray, could you remind us on page three on the seven items that are still in committee, what they are, and I think the dollar value is $13 to $18 million? Sure. One of the first items was related to, I think, one of the recommendations that's still in committee, as you noted, related to the five furlough days. Additional five? So, yeah, the dollar range for that was between $6 to $10 million, and that would be based on who or what classifications would be exempt 
um, from those from those furloughs. So uh, the larger number of exemptions, obviously the lower amount of rev uh, savings that could be generated. Another item was related to uh, uh, two items related to recreation and parks. Let, let me just ask one thing: it, that would take uh, furloughs from 20. Is it five more or 10 more? It would take. A, it would. It would add five five okay, furlough days. To 26 to 31. Yes, okay. for a number of employees. Okay. All right. The next, the other one. The next, uh, the next items were related to recreation and parks. One was for uh, cost recovery for uh, the um, trash um, services. Trash services. And what was that? That was, uh, I believe, 1.8 million dollars. Now, is that paid to another department, or is that outside vendor? That would actually be a reduction in in our um, uh, amounts we set aside in the GCP for that service. Okay. Right, but so they, they, okay, so but Rec and Park at this point would have to pay sanitation, reimburse pay sanitation, sanitation for their mm -hmm. those services. And uh, the other amount was was a straight reduction uh, to uh, I believe their salary uh, savings. I mean uh, their salaries as needed account. Say that again now. Salary that's on Rec and Park also. Yeah, the part timers they as needed yes. Salary. And what was that amount? That was, that one, was million? one million. Okay. Okay. And then there was a uh, uh, three million dollars related to uh, what we believe could be declared surplus in the special parking revenue fund. Okay. All right. And. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. And the remaining items were on the, some of the actions that were. Re related to the same parking structures that were part of the of the P3 transaction. And what was that amount? Seven hundred. There, there were two items. One had to do with um, changing the validation pr program at Hollywood and Highland. Okay, that's fair. And the other one had to do with actually increasing rates and structures. The Hollywood and Highland was uh, nine hundred and fifty thousand, and then the um, the. The rates, increasing the rates was 700,000. Uh, we also, I also for, I forgot to mention one um, related to cleaning green, and that was a 40% reduction um, for $500,000. 40%, what was that amount? 500,000. 500, okay. okay. Yeah. And that's where you're projecting 13 to 18 exactly. million more? Exactly. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, as time progresses, you know, trying to get um, additional dollars in SPRF. Um, from valid, you know, changing the validation program or increasing rates is going to diminish as we go forward. So those numbers at this point have dropped somewhat. Okay. Let me just ask, um, w when will we bring this seven items to uh, out of committee? Is that part of the uh, SPR? Is that part of the, uh, what do we call it, mid-year? We could either wait to the mid-year. Uh, much of it that was being, that's the information was being held in committee so we can bring it forward again as part of the mid-year. Okay, so that's the next large FSR we're dealing Will with. Will be the mid-year, yes. Okay. What, what I'd like you to do on the, uh, for the mid-year, whenever we deal with these seven, if we could have an option A as to what you're recommending and what we're holding, but also create an option B that um, what would we have to look at for that $18 million or so without ad uh, additional five days furloughs. So we could just have a comparison. What are the other cuts? And then even if we do that, we are roughly $30 million still in the hole, right? That is correct. Okay. So that, when do we expect that? After the, after the mid-year? As far as, well, hope the remaining 30. Well, as we come forward with the mid-year, we need to have, provide you some options and actually making making us whole this year. Can you make sure their options are not the exact number that we have to cut? <laughs> that helps us. You know, it helps us look at a wide variety of things. Yeah. Yes. Will that be part it, of the mid-year? It will be part of the mid-year. I, I, now, I just, you know, as we've gone forward, um, you know, the options available to us are becoming, less. there's less, there's less as we go forward. Um, and, and so we're, we're down to, unfortunately, a select group of probably very painful choices. So the issue is what we could expect at the mid-year is that we'll uh, go through all of the recommendations and looking at the um, the department's expenditures. Uh, any sense of where we are on expenditures? Are people staying within their budget? Um, 
Probably uh, we're still gathering that information, but I think for many of the departments, uh, the smaller ones, they're, they're probably coming in line with budgets. I mean, we still have the larger ones that, we, that are concerned, you know, police, fire, city attorney. Th those are the, the big ones that we ha where we have the concerns that are driving the sort of the shortfalls. But many of the others, uh, we're working with them to try to cover whatever gap they might have had. Okay. The thing is, so we'll have some better sense of that, and also we'll have a better sense on business tax uh, because uh, by the mid-year, pretty much the business tax are in. And then what is it? The last well, hopefully part? we'll have some good information. Really, unfortunately, we'll have the mid-year. We won't have good data as far as, as far as the sales tax and business tax till the till the latter part of March, um, the first of April. The, the other thing I want to make sure and I forgot to mention this to you when we had the last FSR, I think on the we allowed the, the city attorney to uh, address their one million dollars, I believe, with one of their. Outside counsel. Outside counsel, yes. Now, one of the things we have to make sure of is that if their outside counsel dollars get exhausted, that they still owe that million dollars. We, we're not going to go back and find that for them. Well, we'll be including that recommendation in the media, so they won't have a choice. Yeah. Okay. So, the, and then the issue is, so we we settled with them for one of the one of their four million. That was the final recommendation. It was four million. They were over, and we said. Uh, we would absorb the three, they would absorb one? Well, we originally had committed to, you know, taking care of four. They used the outside counsel to take care of one to give them three. Mm -hmm. the, the issue becomes whether or not they are assessed additional for furloughs. It all depends on whether you're going to do furloughs. And the other thing is that all of these numbers for the 18, the 13 to 18 could be jumbled somewhat by the remaining 30 that we have to find before the fiscal year. It could, yes. Okay. Now, are we going to have enough information for the 10-11, for the 11-12 budget by mid-year to begin to look at the elements of that next year's budget to put into the mid-year? Yes, our, our plan is to include many of the decisions that um, would otherwise have been presented as part of the, the mayor's proposed budget. We are, we, our plan is to present many of those same decision points as, as part of the mid-year. So we, we'll be dealing with this year's closeout in addition to what we could expect to benefit next year that would in, be, in the mid-year. That would be correct. So you're dealing with a, a plan to address the current year shortfall while also looking forward to 11-12 and, and how we can address that deficit and closing that. So. Okay. Colleagues, any questions on this report? Any questions? Okay. Let, let me just ask one other thing. Uh, you know, uh, after four years, I think uh, – I'm ready to move on from P3, uh, but one of the things I would like to have as an option that we can look at is to give us some insight as to whether uh, what are the, the ramifications and what are the steps to take as relates to creating an RFP for our parking lots, much as we do for Lawa, in the sense of a management company managing our lots as a revenue that the city receives as opposed to uh, in the sense that uh, we kind of break even now. Because uh, I think one of the problems that I have, and I think uh, the issue with P3 is if we're, 40 if we're getting 40 percent of the revenue out of our lots and we give them away for 50 years, that 60 percent that we're not collecting in all likelihood goes to those outside people. And I would like to see is there a way that the city collects the full value of its revenue. So if we can look at that and see what are the options, what are the things that we need to look at so that we can keep an eye on whether our, our activity, what the timeline would take to do it. If I'm not mistaken, the last time we looked at it, the, deep, the, the lots at the airport were generating something like $85 million a year. Now, totally, I mean, it's clearly different in the fact there's a captive audience. But on the other hand, uh, we're talking about a significant larger number of lots. I mean, think. On the nine or seven we were talking about with P3, is, I think it was about the same number of spots, like 10,000 parking spaces. Is it that many? Natalie, you're shaking your head. 85, but the air, airport is about 10, if I remember correctly. But the thing is, it's, a, it's an issue of trying to figure out how do we create a, re, a, a sustained revenue source in the city that if it was managed properly and revenue was coming in that you could rely on it as opposed to the 40 percent now that we break even. So that's an option uh, in the sense of uh, P3. 
I don't know if P3 will, uh, will survive without these uh, uh, different issues that evidently loaded it up. Uh, and I don't know if they was, will ever clarify or rectify themselves. And I don't know how much time and energy we have to keep doing that, down that path after four years. So if it, as an alternative, you can look at that and have some of those questions. And just to take it one step further, the mayor's letter today, uh, which says let's put it all back on the table. Uh, if we were to move in that direction, um, when could we make that happen and, and how would that impact the end of this year and, and the beginning of next year in this whole situation? I believe we have concerns giving the timeline and, and moving forward on, on direction. Uh, depending on your council and beginning, uh, depending on the, the discussion on Wednesday. At, at this point, it would be very, very difficult for us to, to basically put a concession on the street, you know, go through the process and get the transaction to close before the end of the year. We just don't think it's going to happen. Any other questions? So you just don't think it's going to happen this year? Let's say the council says let's take out all those additional requirements and let's move forward. Do you think it'll happen this year if we just... I don't believe it will happen this year. I think it's uh, it's really risky because it will depend a lot on some of the real estate work we're doing and some of the cleanups we have to do on some of the titles. So it's very iffy for us to say for sure it will close June 30th. And obviously if it moves forward on Wednesday, um, we'll do everything we can. But, yeah. Okay. Uh, no questions. We'll move that item with those. Actually, I have one other quick question. If, if we don't do the P3, have we calculated uh, the cost of continued debt service on the lots as part of our calculations for the budget? I mean, the, the We're paying debt service. Debt service is, is an annual, the annual oh, debt service. Oh, right. Annual debt service for us is $8 million a year and another $3 million for CRA. But that's in the budget. Oh, I think the question correct. Is, it's in the budget. Yeah. The question is, since we based the budget on an assumption of doing the P3, no, it's in the if budget. If it doesn't come through, that debt service uh, is still anticipated. Correct. If the debt service has already been paid for this fiscal year, okay. So you know that'll just mean you would defease less bonds the following fiscal year. Um, we could not take the chance that it would not go through. And by bond documents, by contract, we had to put the debt service in the budget. Okay. okay. With that, uh, we'll move with those uh, directions. And this item will be at Council Wednesday. And so, uh, we, and then what is our expectation of the mid year? We expect to have the mid year in early March. Okay, so that's very shortly. Okay. Yes. So we'll move with that direction, and uh, this will be on the agenda for. Uh, Wednesday. Now, we, do we need uh, to kind of walk people through any graphs and stuff? It seems like that's more coherent presentation. The graphs that you've been using on the overheads, oh. is, is there some ability that as you walk through the revenue sources to put some of that? So it seems like people have a better handle and understanding of them when they're put in that format. Okay. Thank you. We'll do that. All right, Steve. You headed to Crenshaw yeah. right now? Okay.